Okay, welcome to another episode of Ask the House Guy Live. It's right here Wednesday at 5 p.m. and it's that time again that all of you people from around the globe are going to be able to ask me real estate questions. And today we have a pretty cool topic. The topic we're going to go on today is going to be ring to ching. The ring to ching topic is pretty popular. A lot of people, you see, they always want to, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, they want to spend a ton of money in marketing and they want to go out there and they want to put bandit signs up. They want to do direct mail. There's all these things that all the gurus teach and you go on all the different sites and they're all showing up there saying to do these different things to make your phone ring, but then they don't follow through. And I can tell you exactly what I mean. Anytime I see a bandit sign in town, if one of you folks out there have a We Buy House sign, you've probably heard from me because I will call on that sign. I want to see what you have to do. If you have a, a sign that says, We Buy Houses Cash Fast, I want to talk to you for two reasons. One reason is because I would like to sell you some inventory. If you're truly a cash buyer, then most likely I'm going to be able to sell you something. But nine out of 10 times, what you are is you're a wholesaler, and then once I call, you already know me and you've already sold to me. So that's the two types of people you get off of there. But here's my point. I would say out of 10 signs that I call, I get two people that may have responded to me. And I'd say rarely do you get somebody that actually answers live. Usually they don't even answer. They just let it go to voicemail and never call me back. And if you know how labor intensive it is to go out there and pound signs in the ground, get called by city officials, get harassed, have to go around and pick them up on Mondays. Why would you go through all of that trouble to not answer your phone? Furthermore, I'm gonna tell you this. I get signs, and any of you know what I'm talking about. If you're one of these people out there that are buying properties, and you have a lot of properties in one of your certain companies, you start getting all the postcards in. And you know the postcard I'm talking about. It's the exact same postcard that everybody seems to be sending these days. And it's all saying that, hey, I noticed you bought a house at 123 Elm Street, and I am the premier wholesaler in that area, and I've got properties that I would like to add you on my list. All the same exact stuff. Well, I call those too. And amazingly enough, no calls back. No calls. And I'm friendly. I'm a very friendly guy. I get on the phone. My message goes something like this. Hey, my name's Rob, and I got your postcard in the mail, and that's pretty cool. You reached out to me. Yeah, we bought a house right around the corner from one of your other properties. And I'd love to connect with the largest wholesaler in the area. So give me a call back. I have cash to spend. I'm looking to buy in that neighborhood. Um, obviously, you know where it is because you sent me the postcard. Here's my telephone number. You know what I hear? I hear crickets. Nothing. I hear nothing from anybody. So now that I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about everybody else and talk about all the problems in our industry, I'm going to come clean and tell you that I'm speaking to you today as a hypocrite <laughs> because I am by far perfect in this. I am not even close to where I should be in my ring to chain. And I always look at, I believe Tony Robbins, I heard him say this years ago, and there's, um, there's three stages. And the three stages are over here, you're not even aware that there's a problem. You have no idea that there's even a problem. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to follow up. You don't know anything about the follow-up systems or, or grabbing the phone and turning it into something. Over here, you're conscious of it. You understand what needs to be done, but you're not quite doing it yet. You want to. You're thinking about it. You might sometimes do it if, you, if it hits you just right, but still not happening. Then over here, it's a subconscious level. It's like brushing your teeth or tying your shoes or you know when you drive to work and you're going down the road and you might drive 45 minutes to the office, I mean over an hour like I do, and you don't even know how you got there because you've been on the phone, you've been thinking about things, and you just naturally go that way. So that's where we're trying to go. Some of you that are listening today might be over here and just don't even know what to do. This is gonna be all brand new information for you and you're gonna be excited just to learn and understand that, hey, this is cool. I understand what I can do with these calls now. You might be where I am here. You know what to do. You need to tweak it a little bit, but you want to make it better. You want to make it better than 
than it is in the past. And you want to get the systems and processes in place and start following them. And maybe together we can go on that journey to over here is where it's just on a subconscious level, it just happens. And calls come in, they automatically go into follow-up systems, they automatically go into place where you're going to actually do this without thinking about it. Because see, when you have to stop and think about it, and it becomes too cumbersome, you don't do it. It's kind of like when you're making a deal with somebody. A confused mind will say no, and it's the same thing in business. When, you're, when you have a confusing system or a confusing process or it's very cumbersome, you're not going to do it. It's just not going to work as well as it should because money loves speed. Money loves simplicity. And that's what we try to do is make things as simple as possible to get them through the process and going down the line to take it from the ring to the chain. Like one of the things I did, and this is very medieval of me, I went and got a little tiny dry erase board here. So when I'm on the phone with someone, I don't like to type on the phone. I, I'm sure somehow there's receptions out there or something or someone that's a, uh, a phone center uh, tech person that can really just fly typing while they're talking. I have to focus on it too much. You'll see me actually during these live casts because I have multiple monitors all over my wall here looking around and trying to do things and um, answer questions and so forth. And I get a little distracted. So over here, over here, what I'll do is I'll use my, uh, my whiteboard and then afterwards I'll come back and I'll take the, uh, I'll take the notes and put them into Evernote, which organizes things for me for down the road. But all right. So now let's talk about this here for a minute. Let's talk about all these things I'm getting ready to dive into. I'm gonna be talking about CRMs, that's customer relationship management. I'm gonna talk about automated text. I'm gonna talk about email campaigns. I'm gonna talk about how we use phone systems and trackable telephone numbers. But before I get into all of that, before I go into all the technology, because that might take you to a confusing place, if you're not trying to conquer the world, Back off of all the stuff I'm going to tell you. Utilize, utilize what I'm telling you to understand the process of how it should work. But it works just as well with a pencil and paper. And don't get caught up in the technology because by getting caught up in the technology, what's going to happen is you're not going to do it. You're going to let things fall through the cracks. You're going to be driving down the street and take a phone call and say, oh, I don't want to take this call because I don't have my computer open with my CRM that I can put all the data in there. So... A lot of times, just a handy hold pen that you buy for 25 cents or you get a free at a trade show. And I love, and I've kind of got away from this, but I've done this for years. When the back to school sales over at Walmart and so forth, they give those spiral notebooks that you can buy for, I think, 19 cents a piece. I would go by like 50 of them at a time. And then I would just keep going through there and put dates at the top so I could always go back and reference things. But then I went on to use Evernote, and it just works a little bit better. And then I use my dry erase board now with my Evernote. Believe it or not, I even carry my dry erase board a lot of times in my car with me or back home with me. And I'll utilize it there as well. Because so I have dry erase even behind me here. That thing's a big dry erase board. And I have dry erase boards in my conference room and everywhere. But these little ones are real nice just for jotting things down. So let's begin by talking about making the phone ring. Because without the ringing going on, then there ain't no chinging going on. So when you're trying to make your phone ring, the first piece of advice that I would give is have a goal in mind. How many calls are you trying to get? You have to have an idea saying, okay, I'm gonna run this campaign or I'm going to run this ad and I'm anticipating getting 10 calls off of this or 15 calls. Because by setting a goal of what you're trying to get, you have something to measure it by. And you have to have some sort of benchmark to know if you're hitting. Like for instance, if you're doing a direct mail, anyone that's doing this out there knows about a half a percent to 2%. If you're at a half a percent, that's about right. 2%, you're a rock star with a very well-written piece to a very good list of people. Because it's all about the list, we're gonna talk about that in a minute too. So you know that uh, if you send out a hundred postcards, you're gonna get anywhere from zero calls, because a half a call doesn't count, to two calls. So a couple calls off of a hundred, 
postcards, you do a thousand, you might get 20 calls. So you're between five to 20 calls off of a thousand postcards. And then that should be something to benchmark by. So the way that you start out in knowing the amount of calls is knowing exactly what type of marketing you're using. It's easy to benchmark that saying that if I'm doing direct mail, then I'm going to get a half to 2%. But what about bandit signs? How many should bandit signs be? And how do you know how many calls are coming in off of each? So you can do this by segregating, segmenting your telephone numbers on it. You got to segregate them and have a different telephone number for different ad campaigns that you can use. And there's multiple systems you can use, and we can talk about that a little bit here. Uh, one I use is Vumber, V-U-M-B-E-R. And you know, a lot of you have heard me talk about that in the past. Vumber is fantastic. I'm not an affiliate. I don't get paid to tell you that. I'm just telling you it's, I happen to like it. There's CallRail, um, CallFire, I believe, is another one. Uh, Ring Central. There's a few different ways. Ring Central is a little more expensive. But all of those will let you segment your numbers. So, for instance, you might have one number that's nothing but I buy houses coming in from your, from your direct mail postcard. You might have an I buy houses on a bandit sign, and you might have an I buy houses on a billboard somewhere, and you might be doing a radio ad, or you might do a Facebook ad saying I buy houses. So you might be three or four different channels, and you want to track where each of these are performing, how they're performing for you. And the reason you want to do that is because of part two now we're going to get to is how much is it costing you to run that ad? How much is it costing you to put bandit signs out? How much is it costing you for direct mail? How much is it costing you for Facebook ads? You need to know that because you're going to take that cost and divide out the number of calls you get with it. And here's what I mean. So if it's costing you, a thousand dollars or thousand dollars to do postcard ads let's say or, or to do let's just say um first class handwritten letters with a first class stamp handwritten envelopes it's costing you a buck a piece for those to go out with the list and so forth so you've got a thousand of those going out and off of those thousand going out let's say you're getting 20 calls on there you're getting two percent response so 20 calls how much is that? What is it? I'm going to use my calculator here for you. 1,000 call, $1,000 divided by 20 means you're paying $50 a phone call. You are paying $50 to get that telephone to ring. Now, when you start putting it like that, are you sending that person a voicemail? Are you not hanging up with your friend talking about the game last Saturday? Because that call's coming in and it's worth $50 to you. So that's going to be your cost per lead. You want to say your cost per call is going to be 50 bucks. And obviously our goal is to get that as low as we can. And like when you're doing bandit signs and things of that nature, you're going to have your, uh, your cost of, of the printing. You have a cost of the stakes. You can have your cost of paying your person to go put them out unless you're putting them out yourself. But even if you're putting them out yourself, you've got to count your time for something. What is your time worth to go out and do that? What is your time worth to go pick them all back up on Monday? Because what I mean on that, for those of you who don't do bandit sides, Friday after 5 o'clock, you put them out and you pick them up Sunday night or before 7 a.m. Monday because that way the city inspectors aren't out to give you fines in case there's a problem. Or you can run into your Google Voice or your bumper number and it's a little harder to track you, but still they're not real big fans of that. So how much is that costing you to put that out? How much is that billboard? And that's what I'm talking about is direct response marketing. See, for a lot of the big companies, all the branding companies, when you see the Nike swoosh or you see the uh, Budweiser campaign or the McDonald's ad with the golden arches, there's no way to directly tell how much that ad is producing. There's no way for them to say, okay, those golden arches up there on the billboard are driving at least 100 customers to a nearby McDonald's that's buying $11 in food for them and their family. Obviously, they're not buying $11 of the food for the whole family, but 11 bucks for them and a friend. So that's just branding. That's a very expensive way of marketing. There's no true call to action with a true way to market it, a true way to 
to get the response on there so you can track exactly what's happening. So when you're trying to go from the ring to the ching, the first thing is you have to make everything trackable, 100% trackable with everything has a call to action and everything is measurable. So now that you've established, okay, I'm spending $1,000 over here to do a direct mail campaign. I have received 20 phone calls off of that. So I'm paying $50 a call for that. Now you have to break it down even further. Off of these 20 calls, what happened with those? How many of them were actual good leads? How many were appointments that were worth going out to see the property? And I'm talking a lot about buying houses for cash, but this is the exact same process, whether you're doing a rent, you're doing a rent to own, whether you're selling a house to an investor, or if you're buying a house, it's all the same. It's still going to be tracking conversions. And when you're trying to get that number dialed in off those 20 phone calls, the first person calls and they have a $100,000 house that they want 97, they, they want 97,000 for, and they're not budging. Okay, boom, they're not gonna work, they owe too much. This person calls, they're out of state, but the house is in foreclosure and they can't do a short sale because they inherited the property and the bank's not dealing with anyone because the signer's not alive anymore. Boom, that might go in that stack. Over here, it's a rental property, it's torn up, but the guy's willing to sell it, owner financing or cheap cash, you just have to get the tenant out of there. Might be a decent one, it's worth going to see. So as you're doing that, you're gonna start segmenting those and see what happened to those 20. So maybe 10 of them just weren't going, worth going to see whatsoever. And then you might have five of them that you wanted to go and see, and then maybe five of them uh, just couldn't sell for whatever reason because they were listed with a real estate agent. Whatever, I'm just making things up, but you want to segment those. So now you're going to go, and I will say the five you want to see, how many of those did you make an offer on? Your answer better be all of them. We make offers on everything all the time. If you're offering, if you're not embarrassed of the offer that you're making, you're probably offering too much. So make sure you are making offers on everything that you're going to see. So now that you have the five you want to see here, how many offers you make, how many got accepted, how many got declined, and why they get declined. It's all a data game. You see, the real estate game is like this much about real estate and this much about marketing and data and follow through. It's really more about having the systems and processes in place and doing what I'm telling you to do here than it is about structuring the deal. The deal structure, there's guys like me that can help you structure things, the attorneys will help you structure it, a lot of title companies will help you put things together. But being able to follow through and gaining the trust of the individual where you can work with them one-on-one, -on -one, this is really where the, the gold is. So going back here, we have these five properties now that maybe you put an offer in all of them and three of them got accepted or maybe two of them got accepted. Let's say two got accepted there. So now we're going all the way back to the beginning. I had a thousand dollar campaign. I got 20 calls in. Out of the 20 calls, I got five people I went to see and I got two accepted contracts. Out of my two accepted contracts, how many did I actually do something with? So going through these numbers here, the thousand dollars, you spent that. 20 calls, $50 a call. Each one of those, I'm gonna, I'll do this here, we're gonna use a little, I don't know if I, you know what, I'm not gonna do the right whiteboard because I don't think, yeah, I'll let you guys tell me if this comes up backwards or not. So 1K out, and then we're gonna have here, 50 per call. Can you guys read that or is that backwards? Hit me on there, anybody? It's good. Okay. So 50 bucks per call. Look at that. That's, that's a new purpose. This was a uh, gift from my daughter, actually. I'm pretty excited about that. So, okay. You spent a thousand bucks. You got 50 per call. Now, if you had five offers, off of that, the five offers, what is that, 200 bucks? No, about 100, what is that gonna be? 1,000 divided by five. 
thousand divided by five. Yeah, 200, look at that good math I did there. Five offers, so it's costing you about $200 to make an offer. And if you got two accepted, right there, that's 500 per deal. Now the reason this is important to know that when that phone call rings, it's worth 50 bucks. That's gonna get your butt off the phone with your Aunt Nancy or whoever you're talking to about nothing to answer this call. $50 a call from that phone rings. Knowing that every offer you put in that, you're really gonna take the time to put a legit offer in there and really try to make things happen because you're it's costing you two hundred dollars to do that. So it'll legitimately cost you two hundred bucks to actually put that in there. Now to get these accepted, this is getting exciting here. About five hundred per deal is your cost. It's costing you about five hundred bucks a deal. And the reason that number is important is because now when someone asks you, hey, I'm a bird dog. If I brought you a deal, if I could turn you on to somebody that might have a uh, house for sale and you buy it, how much do you pay me? You know anything less than $500 is a bargain. You know it's costing you 500 bucks to get a legitimate contract on there, right? So I'm not saying to beat someone up, only give them $200 but you know that 500 is a lot more palatable. And a lot of times when you're starting out, especially, you're thinking, man, why would I spend $500 just to get a deal? Because you're hooking me up with someone. And the reason being is because when you start knowing your numbers and your predictability in marketing, that 500 bucks is what's actually gonna cost you. So now let's get to the sexy fun part of all this. Here's the, here's the sexy fun part. You get these accepted, and let's say deal one, you made 10,000 on, and deal two, you made 5,000 bucks on for a total of 15K. So you made $15,000 on this. So if your numbers are serving you correctly, you've just learned that by investing $1,000 into your business, by investing $1,000 into marketing, and by taking that $1,000 and putting it out there, you can turn this in to $5,000. I mean, I'm sorry, $15,000, let's do my one there. I'm sorry, I, I gotta apologize because I'm actually watching my screen and my, uh, my mind flew up here because it's telling me my internet is unstable. I think it's because my tech guys are over there editing some videos and doing some web development stuff, so if anyone in the back room here can go there and stop them. That would be awesome. So we keep as much bandwidth going as we possibly can to keep uh, all of our attendees happy. So if you put a thousand out to get fifteen thousand dollars back, let me tell you something. That is freaking unheard of. That is unheard of. If your stockbroker came to you and said, "Hey, give me a thousand dollars, and I'm going to turn it into fifteen thousand dollars for you," you're going to think that he's an inside trader or he's running drugs across the border or something. It doesn't even make sense. Only in this business does it make sense like that. So when you start viewing of a dollar in gives me $15 out, the rate of return is absurd. Absolutely absurd. Now, those are some made up numbers. Those aren't typical. But let's just even say for a second that you're a small time wholesaler and you bought a house for 12 grand and sold for 15 grand. You did it a couple of times and you made $6,000 off a $1,000 investment and you realize off of that to go look at those five houses it took you five hours of time so i'm going to erase this right here i'm going to get rid of that fifteen thousand because that doesn't make sense anymore so deal one deal two deal one you made 3k and deal two you made uh let's give me 3k there so a total of 6k and it took you five hours right there to make offers to make offers and you had uh two hours in marketing, and you had three hours in, uh, in calls, in closing, so you had a total of maybe 10 hours into all this, in 10 hours in all this, to make $6,000, you're making $600 an hour. I only charge $500 an hour for consulting. When I met one-on-one consulting clients come in, I'm only 500 bucks an hour. You're making 600 bucks an hour as a wholesaler that's really 
only making $3,000 on a deal. So it's phenomenal money and it starts making a lot more sense. And the reason I want to really break it down that much again is because it makes all this so much more real to you in how important it is to, uh, to get all of this in order and to answer your calls. So now let's talk about this for a second and talk about how can we keep track of all this and what do we do with the other 15 calls that fell off? So let's start with that. Out of these 20 calls, a lot of the people are gonna say, no, I need $97,000 for this house. It's worth 100,000 and if you're gonna offer me a penny less, I don't want it. Well, no now does not mean no forever because time and circumstances will change people's minds. The time and circumstances, as you go and they've moved out of that house that's worth 100 and they want 97 for it and now they're living a city over in their new house and they're making double payments. And now their insurance isn't covering that house anymore because they had to buy a vacant policy on there. And they're cutting the grass and they're plowing the driveway and they're showing it 15 times a day. Their mindset is going to change. Now it might not change enough where you're gonna steal the thing and buy it for 40 or $50,000. But let's say they owed 80 on it and they're willing to sell for what's owed and their payment's only 500 bucks a month and you can come in there and just take their payments over. You see, that's where the magic happens. All the money is in the follow-up. The, the first ones you hit, the first couple you're gonna grab, that's your low-hanging fruit. And that's where everybody gets. Everybody gets the low-hanging fruit. That's the easiest part. But how do you dig deeper and stay in contact with these people? Well, there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, some of the programs out there, I happen to use Infusionsoft, so any of you that get my emails, you're gonna see them coming from Infusionsoft. Um, no offense, Infusionsoft. It's expensive, it's complicated, and it's probably overkill for what I'm doing, but I've had it for so long, and it was a, a product that was out before a lot of the newer, cheaper platforms were out there, and I've just stuck with it because it ties in with a lot of other marketing uh, plans that I use. But there is no silver bullet for a CRM. There's nothing that's gonna be like, if I don't have this, it's not gonna work. And as much as a lot of people make you wanna believe that when they're selling their CRMs, um, there's, there's one out there called RealFlow. Yeah, that's Greg Clement's company. He's right across the street from me here. Greg's a good guy. His company's real nice. Uh, RealFlow, I think they're about 97 bucks a month. I think they might go up to 200 depending on how big a plan, but they build landing pages and everything for you. Um, there's REI Black Book. There's, um, oh gosh, Active Campaign is another one. But I'll tell you one of my favorites, and we also utilize this one, is Podio. P-O-D-I-O. -O. Podio is extremely versatile and extremely easy to use, but it's not an autoresponder. It's not going to automatically follow up with people, but it will keep track of all your stuff. It'll keep track of all your people as you put them in there, like Joe Smith at 123 Elm Street has a house, and here's what he wants, and here's what we offered, and it keeps track of all the notes, and you can set timers to follow you up. And the best thing about Podio, it's absolutely free. It's super simple to use. Very, very simple. It ties in with just about everything. And it can really keep you on top of your game. So that's one of the things you can utilize there. So here's how the follow-up really works. Is you want to stay in front of them in a way that you're truly like their consultant, their friend, someone that's gonna be reaching out to them and not like a big corporation. There's so many people in this business that want to portray themselves as a massive corporation or some big company and they're so concerned about what's my logo or what's my image or how do I um, look more corporate? And it's not about looking corporate. You want to look more real. Like if, and a lot of you will notice my emails when they go out will be uh, very simple. Like if you're selling me a house and you were trying to offer me one for $100,000 and your 97 is all you could take, you're gonna see an email from me at 30, 60, 90, 180, and 365 days later, all set up to hit, that are gonna be very simple and say something like, have your address in the subject line. Or it might say something like, um, hey, with your merge name, Joe, or hey, Mike, or hey, Nancy, whatever it is. And then just checking in to see what you ever did with that house over in Berea, or what you ever did with that house over in Cleveland. Shoot me a call back, here's my number, put a number on there, a trackable number, and talk to you soon. 
don't put some big, robust advertisement that looks like a billboard. It was all graphic art stall out because that's going right to junk mail. People, the, the emails you respond to are the uh, emails that people are really talking to you in. And you can get these emails out, very simple. You don't have to do them one at a time. You can use something like MailChimp. You can use Constant Contact. Uh, oh gosh, there's a bunch of different things out there. You can use uh, AWeber's another one you can use. But you can put them and send them with certain tags in there saying, this person is in follow-up mode. This person, I'm just following up to buy their house. And what happens is if every month you're committing yourself to spending $1,000, I'm spending $1,000 here marketing for leads. And you know every month you're spending 1,000. And after 1,000, you're flipping two houses and you're making six grand. And after six grand, so it's like taking 1,000, turning to $6,000. And that's probably taking you 10 hours of work. So not bad compared to 40 hour work week, I would say. And then every month, the cool thing is, that's the five you got. You have 15 that you didn't get. So 15 and over 10 months, you have 150 people that you're following up with. And these people are like free follow-ups that you're following up with. And what's cool is they will start popping. I can tell you, I think one of the coolest deals I ever did, someone found me because of search engine optimization on Google with the Rob the House guy. Noticed I bought, bought houses, called me. I didn't buy right then. And then they fell into my follow-up system and sold me their house six months later off of an automatically generated email. And it was in the suburbs and bought the thing at a flipping steal, stole this house, and really had no marketing dollars into uh, finding the person, which was pretty cool. So as you're getting these people, here's another little secret squirrel trick that you want to get your, uh, your pens and paper out for. A little bit techy, but don't freak out. You can get this done. You can go to, to Upworks. You can go to... Um, Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, I think it's how you spell it. I never can spell it correctly. Um, I have my tech guys here that do stuff like this for me. But here's something that's kind of cool. As you get their name and as you get their email address and you have your phone number, what you can build is a custom audience on Facebook. And by building that custom audience on Facebook, you can think of all the people that have already seen you on your, from your direct mail. They've already talked to you on the telephone. They've already seen your emails coming in saying, hey, just following up. Now in the news feed, they're starting to see you again. And you can just do a quick little video on the news feed saying, hey, my name's Rob, become the house guy. I don't want to list your house, I want to buy it. That's one of my little taglines. I don't want to list your house, I want to buy it. And saying, still buying houses, shoot me a call if you know you're still wanting to sell. And they'll start seeing that and they'll say, this person's everywhere. If they went and checked you on your website, on your marketing pieces, say, hey, just check me out on my website. Here's my website address. Websites are very, very simple to get these days. I'm sure most people here watching have one. Once they check out your website, you can attach them there. You can get some pixels and say, okay, this person hit my site, and now you can do retargeting on Google. On Google, you can follow them around the web. So when they're on AutoTrader, they're on Amazon, they're on in their favorite sites out there, they start seeing your ad pop up saying, hey, I buy houses, remember? Now they're seeing you in their Facebook feed. They're seeing you following them around when they're on Amazon. They're seeing you in their mailbox. They're seeing you in your email. And they've gotten direct mail from you. And you've talked to them on the telephone. So at this point, who is Toma? Who is the top of the mind awareness? Who is someone now that is really thinking of only you when it's time to sell their house. Because remember, you're not selling Kirby vacuum cleaners. You're offering to write somebody a check for their property. You're offering to do something. And all you got to do is get their attention, get them to pick up the phone and call you. And now here's the tough part. Answer their call, take notes on them, and follow up with them. And follow up with them pretty religiously. And you're going to be amazed at the type of responses you're going to get. So here's another little thing that we do off of this is you can set them up as you get the telephone numbers and you're keeping all this on track, you can do a little text marketing to them. If you're going to, you at the same time, I'm going to me back up before I hit the text marketing. Before that, you can do a direct to voicemail campaign. And I always say that I use um, Slidial. We have other 
or Sly Broadcast is what it is. And Sly Broadcast, you can go and import their telephone numbers into the system and you can pre-record a message. And when you pre-record the message, it would sound something like this. Hey, this is Rob, just giving you a call. You know, we talked a little while back about me buying your house. Um, I'm the one that sent you the mailer and then we talked on the phone and we couldn't come to a meeting in the mines. But you know, I'm still very interested. I'm looking, maybe we can work something out. Maybe we can up our price a little bit or maybe we can work on some terms. But I'm anxious to buy something. If you're still anxious to sell something, give me a call. Let's just revisit it for five minutes. Here's my number. Number is a bumper trackable number. And what happens is you record that, you upload that into Sly Broadcast. From there, when you hit send, their cell phone does not ring. Their cell phone just says, missed call, you have a voicemail. And it went right to their voicemail. They listen to their voicemail and there you are on there. So at that same time, you can go and do a broadcast text message on there. There's a million places that you can do broadcast text. I use Fix Your Funnel, but that ties with Infusionsoft. Off of that, you can have a pretty little text message saying, hey, I just left you a message about your house. Give me a buzz. Boom, send that out there to the same person. So now they've got a text message from you and a call from you. My point is, the follow-up is what gets it. The follow-up is where all the magic happens. Because remember, when you just fell into their mailbox, remember there was a, a 2% was a rock star response. 2% of a one mailer. 2% was the great response. What happened to the other 98% of the people? Well, here's what happens with them. You don't mail a different list every single time. You mail that same list consistently seven times, the same list, you keep hitting them. And each one, you want to reference the next letter and the previous letter. So it's written in a storybook, I'm getting the copywriting a little bit there. But you want to mention, hey, I had talked to you before, and in a previous letter I mentioned I wanted to buy your house, well here's something else that I have for you. And you can mention something in the letter that might be, be a, uh, it's called a secondary reason of, for response. And the secondary reason for response would be something like this. You send them a letter, first of all. The next one, you might want to send them a postcard and say, hey, it's Rob again. I had sent you a letter a couple weeks back offering to buy your house. But even if you don't want to sell me your house, I can at least hook you up with um, my guys that do the work on mine to get it ready to sell. They're looking for a little extra work. Give me a call. If maybe they want to come over and fix a couple of things, if you're just going to list it on the open market, just come up with something that's a secondary reason for response. So even if they don't want to sell, it still gives them a reason to call you. Let's see here. Uh, I'm just reading this real quick because I have a few calls out here. I checked my desk. CRM, do I use for? Okay, I covered that. I'm just seeing a few of these coming in there. Um, so you're going to uh, you're going to give them another reason to call you. So you might start with a letter and then go to a postcard. And the third one, you might want to go to an invitation size letter. Always a first class stamp, always handwritten, even if it's a font, make sure it looks good. And reference the last one. Then you might go to lumpy mail. Like one of the ones I like to do is by, like by the, the sixth one, I'll actually put a contract. You can put mergers in there, especially with today's technology lets you do everything. You can put your purchase agreement in there and fill out their address and tell them to fill out the price in there and just sign it and put one of your pens in there. Think about this, when you get a small envelope in the mail and it's lumpy, you are opening that. You are going to open that lumpy mail. Your goal is to get noticed. And for every person that calls you, maybe they won't call you, maybe they'll look you up online, but they look you up online, guess what happens? Then you have their pixels and you can retarget them on Facebook. They call you, you've got their information, you can follow them that way. If they look up on Facebook, you can get their pixels that way and start following them on Facebook. With today's technology, there's so ways, many ways to stalk somebody that's legit and legal that they just can't get away from you and you have a solution to their problem. So keep in mind, you're out there, you're trying to help them. They have, for lack of better terms, it sounds bad, but they have cancer 
and you have chemotherapy treatment and you're trying to cure them and help them, you just have to convince them that this is the treatment they want. So when they have an unwanted property, it is your obligation or your duty to follow up with them to try to get them to do a deal with you. So I talked a lot about dealing with buyers or dealing with yeah, the, the sellers on these and you're trying to buy the property. This works the exact same way with folks on a buyer's list. I hear so often everybody wants to be a, uh, wants to build, build a buyer's list. They're always calling me, hey Rob, can I put you on my buyer's list? Rob, can I sell you? I want you on my buyer's list. I tell everybody, your buyer's list will create itself if the deal is right. You don't need to go out and put people on a buyer's list. Your buyer's list creates itself. And think of this. If you have a $100,000 house and the house, you can get it for 40 grand that needs 10 or let's say it needs 20, so you mean for 60. And you get it for 40 and you're offering it out for 49.9 and it needs 20. How hard is it when you put that on Craigslist to get a buyer's list? You're going to get a million calls on that. You just have to track them all and write them down and write down exactly who called, here's the telephone number, and here's what I'm looking for. And you build your buyer's list off of that. I don't personally like just being thrown onto a buyer's list. and I don't really care that much about people asking me exactly what I'm looking for. Just send me everything you have. Send it. Don't try to segment me out because what I want today might not be what I want tomorrow. Tomorrow might be, I might have more of an appetite for something in the suburbs I mean, a year ago, I was buying real heavy in the inner city. Now we're pretty heavy in a lot of the inner city stuff. So I'm looking for some more suburban stuff to balance it out. So we'll look at everything. And I don't want to be pigeonholed into this thing. That's all I buy. But by getting the right property, you'll get the buyers for it. Now, as far as following up with the buyers, this is probably – one of my weaker parts, when I talked about this is the, uh, the hypocrite session on here, I get tons of people that call me wanting to buy properties. And that is probably one of my weakest things is packaging things up and getting them put there and getting them to closing because that's where a lot of the work comes in. And we spend so much time trying to service our people we've already sold to and get them under management, everything straightened out and get repairs done and everything going there. It slows us down for our sales. That's why a lot of people have like a disposition department. That's what the growth in the company is all about. And that's when you have lots of people that are um, on board, but when you get lots of people, you have lots of mouths to feed. So we try to keep a little bit smaller, a little bit more dialed in and not have so many people hanging out on payroll. But going back to the, the follow-up with these people that want to buy properties from you or buy mortgages from you or wherever they might want to buy, the best way to follow up with them is as you get new deals, I don't like, if I, if, you, if I look back at like the last 10 deals I did, and I look at like the last 10 broadcast emails I did off of my CRM, I really didn't sell anything off of that. I didn't sell off of the broadcasting. I sold off the one-on-one -on -one interaction by picking up my telephone, talking to that individual, and handpicking something I know works for them. And I think that's a little more important. As much as I'm talking about just using buckshot to, to sell, to buy properties, when I'm buying, I'm hunting with a shotgun. I'm just blowing holes, of, just doing everything I can, trying to get everything I can in sight. But when I'm actually selling a property, it's more of a bow and arrow. It's a very targeted sale to that person. I'm not just taking a list. I get so many people that will call and say, Rob, Put me on your list. Send me your list. Send me what you have. I don't have lists. Real estate agents have lists. You want a list? Go on the MLS. There's lists of thousands of properties you can buy. I'm going to ask you what you're looking for while I have you on the phone. And if you're trying to get cash flow, you're trying to get equity, if you want to buy, fix, and sell, what are you trying to do? And then I'll hand pick something from either my inventory or something I'm trying to buy. And I will hand that off to you, something that I think is going to work the best. And I find by doing that, by giving that specialized personal attention, that individual, that I get them the best property for their needs, their money is best spent, and things work the smoothest versus just throwing stuff against the wall to sell it. So as much as I'm talking about just mass marketing and trying to rake in as much as you can, I do slow it down on my disposition section, and I actually try just talking to the people and seeing exactly what they're looking for.
I've got I got a few questions popping in here. Let's see which one of the two new screens going here. Uh, question I got here about what mailing list do I use? Okay, um, again, hypocrite hour. I don't use a lot of mailing lists. I'm not a big direct mail guy as much as I can speak on it, and I have done it in the past, and I do understand it very well. I don't do it all the time because I have enough deal flow without doing a lot of direct mail. And a lot of direct mail for me would be hiring more people, putting more people on staff, more phone calls being answered, and so forth. And I get a lot of uh, people just bring me their deals, and that's where I get my deals to, to buy and resell. Um, but if I'm using a mailing list, that's going to depend on what your in game is. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to find houses in the burbs? Are you trying to find rental properties? Are you trying to find high equities? Are you trying to find probates, which probates can be a little bit challenging because of uh, dealing with the family and so forth and not seeming like a vulture coming in at a time of, of uh, despair. Um, we will also uh, go through, and I'd say my favorite one would be the absentee owner. And I, I will hit those once in a while. The absentee owner is meaning if there's a house here in the Cleveland market and the owner lives in California and there's a different tax mailing address and they own more than one property, I like to reach out to those folks for two reasons. One, because landlords are never stag stagnant. If they have more than one property, that means they probably want to buy more or they're trying to liquidate and get rid of what they have. So they're always a good connection to have. And you can really just about build a business just off of, off of that alone, off of staying in contact with out-of-state owners. Um, getting in touch with them is a little bit challenging sometimes because they get so much mail and they get so many of those little postcards. So you have to do something that is going to grab their attention. And here's another uh, secret squirrel trick that I'm going to give you that I want you to write down. This is something that nobody does. And I probably shouldn't be giving it away, but it's like I tell my wife all the time. Uh, we always have that discrepancy when we're talking about um, giving away trade secrets because she owns a vodka company and she's also a trainer, owns a gym and so forth. And she doesn't like talking a lot about some of the stuff in there because it's trade secrets. And I'm like, honestly, in our industry, I could stand up with a billboard telling you exactly how I do things, mailing you my forms if you want them, giving you everything you want. This ask the house guy. This is not costing you a dime today. Today, you were on here, you need to ask me anything you want. You can type me questions, I'll answer them. I'll go over things um, with you and everything else. And unfortunately, out of everybody that's on here, you might have a couple that take action on what I tell you. But everything I'm telling you is legit real stuff. So it's real stuff that really works, and it's up to you to take action. Nothing works unless you do. Nothing will work unless you do. There's nothing easy about that. I get up at 5.30 in the morning, and literally there's nights that I walk in my door at 11 o'clock at night. I think Carlton Sheets lied to me. He told me I'd have nothing but spare time with my kids, pushing them on the swings and spend time on my yacht. I don't know. It just seems like I live at the office. <laughs> but I enjoy what I do, and I do love it. And I wouldn't have to be ramped up that much. If I didn't want to be, I could slow it down a little bit. But I just I like the game a lot. So I lost my train of thought. I'm going all the way down this, this long rabbit hole here. Oh, I was going to tell you the secret squirrel trick about direct mails. One of the discouraging things people have happened to them is they send their direct mails out and let's say they send a thousand out, and all of a sudden the mailman brings them back a stack of letters like this, they're non-deliverable. They take that list and they go, ah, they throw them away. Worst thing to do, first thing you wanna do is scrub your original list to get those people out there because you just spent money trying to get a hold of them and now you know that it's not a good address, so you've cleaned up your list. So clean your list up that way, that's the first thing to do. The second thing to do, is look at these numbers and skip trace them because that's the that is the money pot. That's the one nobody's going after. That's the one that only the hardest workers are going to get. And you can use things like Lexus Nexus. You can use Spokio, S P O K E O, I believe it's spelled. And you can skip trace and find where these people are. Think about this. Think about if your neighbor one day moved. Your neighbor moved. They up. They up and left. This is a person that you see cutting the grass every day, that you watch the car in the driveway next to him, wave to him, hey, Bob, hey, Joe, how you doing? You're having barbecues, your kids are playing together. What's the chances if they moved, unless they're on the run from something or in the federal relocation program with the FBI, that you don't know where they went? There's a good chance you know exactly where you went. they went. You know they either got divorced and maybe one moved here, one moved there, maybe got transferred to Wisconsin. 
maybe they bought another house around the corner. Whatever the case, unless you're on the run from somebody, you know where they went. So it's not that big a deal, especially if you're in hometown USA, is to take that letter, go over there, and talk to the people. Talk to the neighbors. Ask them, hey, man, where did Joe Smith go? Knock on the door of the, uh, the house, first of all, that you tried to get. Ask the new owners. Maybe, the, maybe someone moved in there. Maybe there are tenants that are in there. Who knows? Go ask them and find out. I'll go as far as we put yellow letters. The yellow letter campaign, like I've been doing this before they ever said the word yellow letter online. Before online was around, I was doing yellow letters. Before there was an internet, the internet was just for government purposes, I was doing yellow letters. If I have my yellow letters, I'll put them on the door. And if you look at my yellow letter campaign, it's all about driving for dollars and tagging doors. I get an 8% response on that, by the way. That is flipping amazing. If you want a copy of my uh, yellow letter campaign, I can get you the link. Just call my office, 330-800-9090. That's 330-800-9090. I know I've been using a lot of different telephones numbers in the past on these shows, trying to segment down um, exactly where calls are coming from or what I'm doing. There's a lot of them teaching here today. Um, I have pulled away from that just using my main office number, the 330-800-9090. It's easy enough for, um, for my right-hand girl, Mariah, for her just to uh, tag in the system of what kind of car you are and get you what you need. It's a little easier number to uh, remember. Uh, Danielle, if you want to throw that up there, it's 330 330- 800-9090. You can uh, shoot her a call and uh, or a text. Even. You can text that number and say you're interested in the yellow letter campaign. I pull about an 8% response from that. And uh, Danielle will give you a login and password and give you access to that there. And it's pretty cool because here's what it is. I show you how to get the data of different houses or expired listings in the area for sale by owners in the area. Different, different types of things for rents in the area. And then you go around and we, we put them onto a Google Maps and gives you a route. And then you have a yellow letter that's specific to exactly that type of person it is. Hey, I noticed your listing expired online. Hey, I noticed your house is for rent. Or hey, you know, I noticed your house is for sale by owner. Whatever it is, I give you all the different verbiage in there. And you take that on the front door and that will give you an 8% response, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's a very high response. But here's the part two that I don't mention in there that I'm going to give you now because this is the updated version. This is a much thinner, younger version of me teaching that, gosh, probably like six, eight years ago, is what's cool about it is hit the neighbor's houses and say, hey, I'm interested in the house next door to you. If you can help me find the owner, I'll, I'll give you some cash. I'm trying to buy the property. Now, remember, you can pay how much? up to 500 bucks based off my numbers, your numbers might be different, but you'll know how much it costs you to actually get a deal. So put a little letter on their door and say, hey, here we go, I'd like to uh, work with you on that. So again, I keep getting asked the numbers, they're all up there, popping up there. So you go around and you hit this, I get an 8% response. In one day, I can pay someone and pay them a decent amount, it cost me about a buck a letter, I think, to get them all out. I can get 100 of them out in a day, probably in five or six hours, I think my guy can get 100 of them done. 8% response. That is eight calls, my friends, eight calls off of 100 bucks. So now let's take that. Eight calls, I'm gonna erase this, I'm gonna do it on here for you. I'm just showing off this yellow letter. Because now this is also, you have to be a transactional engineer and you can do different things. You can handle what to do with rental properties, over leveraged properties, properties in foreclosure, vacant properties, properties in repair. You have to be a transactional engineer and know how to do a lot of things, but I can help you right here every Wednesday, 5 p.m. I can answer your questions to help you put the offers together. Anyone has any questions, you can raise your hand on here. I can always bring you on. And also I can, um, I can even analyze deals with you. So any of you that have deals you wanna analyze or bring them on, if you get them to uh, Danielle ahead of time, especially, we can spend 15 minutes or so going over making a case study out of you. Uh, I know there's a lot of times I don't get to answering the raised, the raised hands, but that's just because I get on a ramble here. So, okay, so you have 100 of these, and let's just call it 100 bucks. It costs you to get them out, right? And that's day one, two, three, four, five, only five days a week. So that's 100, 100, 100, 100, right? So what that equals is you have, 500 of these out here, and it costs you 
$1,500 out there. And an 8% response, that's 40 calls. But hold on, wait. We have four weeks in a month times four, times four. So you have 2,000 bucks out there times four. So that's 160 calls, 160 calls. You have 160 people in a month that you're putting through your follow-up system. It's costing you a couple thousand dollars. I remember before of our numbers, we said that 20 calls, and I'm just going based off the old numbers, this might be a little bit different, but if you have 20 calls, and after your 20 calls, you're getting five, you're getting um, five offers on there. So 160, and every, every 20 gets five offers made because you get to go out there. So we take that 160, 160 divided by five, that's, uh, I mean, I lost my track of math here. I'm getting bad at my math. So every 20, you get five offers. So is how it is there. So think of how many offers you got there. Were there 32 offers I believe you're gonna get? I'm running out of room here. And off 32 offers, I'm going off that. Let's say you get the opportunity to see 32 houses off of that. And then half of those are turning into, or one third of those are turning into a deal. If you get one third of those, that's 10 deals times, let's say 2,000 a deal on a wholesale. That's 20K off a 2K investment. 20,000 off a 2,000 investment. 2,000 a deal, you're basically almost a bird dog at that point. And I know I'm talking kind of quick and I don't want to get lost in math or anything. And I see some questions being typed in. If you want to raise your hand, I'll bring you on. Otherwise, I'll read your question here in uh, just a minute. So my point is, the more calls you take, the more people you can put in your follow-up system, the more people in your follow-up system the more offers you can make, the more offers you can make, the more deals you can get, the more deals you get, the more you can close, the more you can close, the more you can make. So really, it all turns into, it's an investment. When, they, when you say you're a real estate investor, this is what it means. You're investing in real estate. You might be an active investor where you're actually actively trying to lock houses up and sell them, but there's still money involved. And you don't have to spend a ton of money. I know a lot of people will... Um, will argue with me about, well, Rob, I'm getting in this because I don't have any money. I'm a wholesale. I'm just getting started. I don't have $2,000 to spend. That's why I developed the L Letter Campaign because you don't need money for that. The L Letter Campaign, you need mo enough money to buy the yellow tablets, which is going to be, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. You need a pen. It's 20 cents to write it. You need a copy machine. You can go to Kinko's and use. You can use your laser jet printer, whatever it is. It's very simple. And you need gas to drive around. So it might literally cost you 100 bucks in materials and gas and time to get your first eight calls in, your, next, your first 40 calls in for the week, your first 160 calls in. But literally one month of doing that, one month, and that's all you did is one month of dedication of, of actually putting the time in, putting the letters out there, taking the calls, putting them in a follow-up system, and sticking with it for that entire month. You have literally built your pipeline for a year. You will have a year of pipeline. Now it will start drying up if you don't keep refilling the pipeline, but you will have it so jam packed that there's not that lag time that you're used to. And here's what I mean by that. Anyone's in sales, we all know that you're, you go here is you're just prospect, 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 but you're trying to get it. And then you're actually making your sales up here. You're going here, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, you get all your sales, and then you stop making sales and you're going to prospect down, down again. So it's a constant up and down hill. You're making your money, you're not making money. You're making money, you're not making money. But the more you can automate and you get your automation working for you, the more that you can have, I don't care about that my mouth on because I'm talking you can have a steady stream of income coming right across there. So here's, hope that helped a little bit today. Here's what I want to do for you. I know I was really hoping to cover a whole lot more than this today. I was hoping there was so much stuff I didn't get to, especially in, um, 
in uh, in, in this in this webinar here. But I did. I'm going to go over here by just a couple minutes. If if I have your permission to do that, for those of you that uh, want to bail, that's okay. But I want to mention something about wholesaling here because I had, gosh, a multitude of questions coming in here about wholesaling. The wholesaling part of all of this is, as you prospect and as you get these people, as I'm saying the offers are made and the offers are accepted. You are locking them in the contract. And this actually just happens to be a, a real contract right here. This is a real contract that has in my desk that I have locked in. That I'm really purchasing the property and I really have it locked up and I have, you know, I think this one here, I did a quick one. I did 10 business days on it. I didn't need a lot of time on it. A 10 business day deal there. I can assign that contract to someone else. I can take my interest out of there and say, you know what? I'm not going to close this contract. I'm going to assign it to Joe Smith over here for $5,000. So I sell my piece of paper. So as you're out there getting these offers accepted, if you're doing, if you're putting 100 letters out and getting eight calls and then 40 calls a week and out of that, let's say that you're not even great at converting and you get 30 people agreeing to sell their property under market value, that's when you go out there and you market. You can call someone like myself and that we want to buy your property from you and you can wholesale it to us and make a few thousand dollars. So that's really how it works the best is just if you're going to lock these up and you're worried about if you're going to, because I, I'm getting a lot of people on here talking about that what happens when you start getting this many phone calls, you don't have the kind of money to close them. That's when you start assigning your contracts and that's what wholesaling is all about. And we're going to cover all that. Um, here's what I have coming up in April, let's see, was it, it was April, May, in May, in the first of May, I'm going to have a very small group. I'm going to limit it to 10 people. That's it. Uh, 10 people. And out of those 10 people, we're going to get together for an entire day. And if you've heard of like traffic and conversion, this is like the ring to ching. It's going to be a full day of ring to ching. It's like what I just gave you like a quick blurb on. We're going to dive deep into it and really get the mailing campaigns, the mail pieces, how often we hit, when we hit, how we follow up, everything, all of that in the first half of the day. And this is why I'm limit, limiting to 10 people, and this is what's sexy about it. The second half of the day, we are going to have stations set up. And our station setup is going to do this. We are going to actually implement this in your business because we are not a bunch of entrepreneurs. This is a group of actioneers. We want the actioneers, not the entrepreneur. That actioneer, we are going to implement, okay, here's your mail piece. This is how we do it. We're going to set you up trackable numbers. We're going to set you up with Bumber accounts and set you up so you have your trackable numbers. We're going to set you up if you want web videos, having a web video made. We're going to set you up with your mailing list and the mailing list that you hit. We're going to set you up with your yellow letters and help you write those and print them off and show you exactly how to do it. So you're leaving there not with a knowledge, not with an action plan, but with action taken, so you have moved over from the wanting to the doing, and that's where the rubber hits the road and you start making money. So I've got room for 10 people in that. That's coming up in May. We're gonna have that. Call my office at 330-800-9090. That's 330-800-9090. And just uh, tell Mariah that uh, you want to uh, talk to uh, myself or Daniil about um, attending that. It's going to be an amazing thing. There's going to be a cost for it, but it's, I promise, double your money back if this thing's not uh, everything and more that it's cracked up to be here because I'm really giving you everything on there. Uh, what else do we have coming up? If you're in the Cleveland area, second Tuesday, Rockside Holiday Inn, we have the uh, Greater Cleveland Rhea. That's coming up here, second Tuesday, 6 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Rockside Independence. Uh, I'll be there opening up on that. Um, I'm sure our topic is this month, but you want to attend that. And every Wednesday at 5, at, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, right here, uh, ask the house guy live. Bring your questions. You can uh, get a hold of Daniil, and you can, um, have, you can go ahead and give him any information on any deals you might have coming up. I can bring you on the show. I didn't see a reason to bring anyone on this time. I see some hands raised, but it works out a little bit better sometimes just to read the question you have. If you see there on the, on the uh, screen, I believe Daniil just gave his email. Just email him over exactly what you have. I'm Rob, I'm the house guy, and ask the house guy live, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Go have a productive week.
Hey Actioneers, if you like what you saw in this video, go ahead and hit subscribe on here. And more importantly, smash that bell button. That way you get notified when we're going live. And if you're a entrepreneur, just take a hike and don't hit anything at all. Remember, nothing works unless you do.